What's going on everyone? Uh, welcome back to another week. Um, been a pretty good week this week. We've um, managed to tick a fair few boxes, get a fair bit done. Um, we got some work done on the front of the 34. We managed to get the bearings in, get that sorted, so you'll see that. Um, went roll racing, that was pretty cool. And what you've probably come here to see is we actually made some carbon. It uh, definitely wasn't through uh, I don't know, lack of effort, let's put it that way. So stay tuned and watch it. Yeah, also, we've been getting some feedback, which has been cool. We've managed to get the lights sorted and not flickery. That was cool. Um, also, one thing I hadn't really even picked up on was the black border around it. So let's see if we can fix that. Here we go. All right, fingers crossed. Board to be gone. Um, yeah, anything like that, anything you guys are picking up on, don't like, do like, let us know. It's only gonna make us better, easier to watch. Um, yeah, helps us out. So cheers, Jamie, for um, pointing that one out. Welcome back everyone. Um, I think last week I kind of left it at the point where um, the front suspension of the 34 we were waiting to get some bearings, some um, thrust bearings or Torrington bearings. So that actually turned up. I thought I'd uh, kind of take the opportunity to show you what they are and kind of how they work and that. So this is a, uh, a thrust bearing. So obviously you've got normal bearings which you can take um, different loads, so I guess you've got a radial load, an axial load. So obviously those bearings, they're designed to work in compression this way and they rotate and the way they do that is obviously they've got a, um, a bearing race here, which then obviously these little ball bearings run in, top and bottom. So the whole idea is that um, when you kind of sandwich this, you can then get that kind of free movement. I thought I'd do just a little bit of a demo to kind of give you a bit of an understanding, but uh, give us two secs. This <coughs> nut and bolt, usual. I've just got these washers here and here just for spacing but they'll get replaced with this. As you all know, you clamp these down, even just finger tight, you can't turn those washers. So what the idea is, is I'll take this out. They're all free, all loose. You replace that. <clears throat> with one of these bearings. Tighten this down, finger tight, and that spins freely. So all bearings, yeah, they're designed for different loads. Obviously like uh, a spigot bearing, that's designed for um, basically like a, an axial load, not a radial load. Um, these here, this is what they're designed to do. So we've actually implemented that on the R34, because if you can imagine, all we're getting where that bush was binding is just a small amount of rotation. But it was just enough, like you saw with the other washers, that it just binds. So what we did, we'll come over here, is that upper bush. I've actually just machined uh, a bit off the overall length because we're limited by our width in here. And we've actually got one, let's see if you can see it, one of those thrust bearings there, 
one here. And now what that does, where before we had a fair bit of bind, everything is actually now really free. It all moves about, there's no, no bind in any of it, which is cool. Obviously we've still got the sway bar on, that's where we're getting the kind of spring from. But that's definitely taken out a lot of that, that bind that we're getting from up there. The only reason we could narrow it down to being up there is if we backed off the nut and actually loosened that whole bolt up, it would move freely, but we can't race it like that. So that's now done up nice and tight and we've got that movement. So happy days. We're um, still going to do the other side, but the next project's obviously working on trying to get to some carbon, which um, is turning into a bit more of a mission than I first anticipated. I didn't um, have all the gear that I needed, thought I'd be able to, yeah, get some stuff, didn't work out. So I actually had a chat with a, a local dude, um, Gavin Ward, he's got a pretty amazing uh, Honda. He races that here in SA and he's done a heap of carbon work, so he kind of gave me some pointers. One of the things that I was missing was a vacuum kind of chamber. So the idea of it is as like a catch pot. So if we pull resin out of the part, because we've got too much in there, it will end up in the catch pot, not in our pump. Um, I was looking at trying to buy something, had a chat with him and he had a really good idea and he's uh, done it himself, which is just a nice simple bit of PVC. So this here, just a normal cap on the bottom. I made mine about 300 mil long. Can unscrew the top. Um, I've just got a little fitting in here with the hose in. I pulled a vacuum on it this morning, probably 10 hours, 12 hours ago now. And it's um, still got a vacuum. I'm, I'm waiting on a gauge. So I've ordered a gauge, but that's, I don't know, the first one that I ordered got lost and has never turned up so i've had to order a second one so that's kind of holding me up but i just want to make sure that we're able to pull a vacuum hold it um that's something that seems to be pretty obviously critical to an infusion so we'll get there we've got some of the bits ready to go just yeah one of those things try something new you're gonna learn hopefully i'm trying to instead of stuff something up just take my time do it properly but yeah get young Done on everyone. Um, so, starting to get hopefully a bit ready to do the carbon. Um, as you would have just seen, we've got that stainless panel that we're planning on using. Um, gave it a quick, just a cut and polish, um, just to get any kind of dirt 
junk off of it, get it nice and cleaned up. panel traced it out so we've got a bit of a mark of roughly where we need to be just so I can get a gauge of where we need to wax and that so we used <coughs> there's a couple of different variants of this um, mold release um, this is I don't I can't remember which one it was but this is the one that doesn't have any silicons in it so if you want to um, paint the panel afterwards this is the one to use so just reading the instructions we chuck it on leave it for kind of five ten minutes till it hazes up then buff it off then about uh what is it yeah about half hour later we'll do another application we'll do about six of those um so yeah you gotta wait kind of put the wax on ten minutes later five ten minutes later buff it off once it's buffed off half hour you can do a reapply so i'll um get on with getting those done uh, while we're waiting in the meantime I'll probably end up starting to mark out our carbon um, start cutting that and hopefully getting ready so part of the reason why we do the kind of mark here is where we're going to run that gum tape you don't want to have your wax because then it just won't stick to it you'll have issues from what I understand so what I think we'll end up doing is we'll probably run our um, resin in through here we've got a nice little distance that we can run our tape resin in and then we'll probably do the opposite thing up in this top corner uh, we'll try and run the resin out well basically yeah air out to our catch pot so that, that way hopefully it pulls the resin all the way through the part um, when we do it I may try and block that side up one thing that I see that AJ does and he recommends is yeah try and get your obviously air out the highest point and that'll help then all the air is going to rise to the top so you're probably less likely to get any issues um, being obviously just a little thin sheet it's just going to bend so that's going to be the tricky part but fingers crossed we might actually get a door card done stick with it cheers First wax coat polished off, um, second one on. One thing you'll notice too is we've been running uh, the first wax. I started from here and zigzagged that way. Second coat, we're gonna go along that way. And what we'll end up doing is I'll basically alternate that and make sure that way then we know that we don't have any um, spots that we're missing. One thing we do have that I'm a bit kind of wary about is there's a bit of a scratch through this panel. It's not overly deep, but we'll see if it shows up. I think it probably will. But as a test piece, we'll see how this door car goes. If it's acceptable, it is. If it's not, I figure that we're still gonna end up with two, even with that through the middle, we're gonna end up with two decent pieces that we can make trim pieces from. We might start getting a bit of a collection of little random bits and pieces of carbon. So that'll be cool. We can make filler panels and block off panels, whatever we need to do. But yeah, now we'll um, get a door card. I just rolled out the carbon, we've cleaned that up. So we'll, um, hopefully I've got a big enough table we can lay it on here and trim it to size, or roughly to size. Obviously we need it to fit on the, on that piece of stainless, so. That 
Well, yeah, I like using the ruler because it can keep like a nice straight cut with the weave. And then obviously we'll end up having to trim the sides up because it's going to be too wide to fit on there considering we've only got that much room on the door card to where our, our gum tape's going to go. So, I'm trim it up now. Alright, so we have uh, our panel all waxed. You can kind of hear and clearly see this is where we're going to be putting our gum tape compared to where the actual part's going to be. We've got most of our material cut, so we've got our peel plier, two layers of carbon, uh, flow mesh, and our vacuum bag. So, we'll see. We're, um, <clears throat> we'll start laying the carbon down, then follow that up with some peel plier, uh, the flow mesh, and then bag it, and uh, we'll pull a vacuum down on it and see how we go. See if it holds. Be nice, fingers crossed. So what I'm doing here is um, obviously the side of this, well the stainless side, that's gonna be our visual. So we've got our first layer down, and all I'm gonna do, we've got that ruler there, hopefully this will work. Fold it over and just check it, and like little strands and stuff like that, we wanna get out, because that's what we're gonna see. That's gonna be our final side, and we want that to look as nice as possible. So just going through, making sure everything's in place and looking nice and all the weave is nice and straight nothing's kind of out of place so that actually looks really good so what I'll do fold that back over and now we know roughly we kind of fold it to there so I'm just going to move this across fold this side over Check through it, it actually looks really good. Once this piece is down, it's kind of a bit less stressful because we know that we've got our um, visual side good. From here, it's just a case of really getting everything into place. Um, not too stressed about these little straggly bits up the top. So, Plans have changed a little bit. I think what we'll do is we'll probably run the resin in here and out here because we've got a nice bit of room. I can run a bit of peel ply off the edge and I know that I've got a decent resin break for it. Let's keep going.
All right, getting closer. We have vacuum bagging sitting on. We have our peel ply flow mesh, our two layers of carbon. I've just been mucking around getting all the hoses on. So we've got the suction hose. We've just got a piece of the um, breather in there. I've seen before the bag kind of collapse over it and block it off so you don't get any suction. So we'll chuck that in there, see how that goes. We've got obviously a bit of a break, so hopefully the resin will come through and won't end up in the tube. If it does, that's why we've got the catch pot anyway. Um, this hose here, this will be our resin in. Um, I've just got it coiled up at the moment. We haven't got any resin made up, so we're just going to start probably in this corner, tuck all the bagging film in, work our way around, um, and then we'll pull a vacuum down and see if we've got any leaks, how it all looks. Um, I'm just using this at the moment just to clamp off that line. I think that should work all right. Um, I'm going to try and get some line clamps. The one that I had in mind uh, isn't quite strong enough to clamp off that PVC line. We'll get there. I'm going to try and find something a bit softer. I might try a, a silicon. Um, this PVC, I don't know, maybe it's just because it's cold. Like it's frosty morning this morning. Um, but it just doesn't bend. It doesn't want to move. It's very rigid. So I might try something different down the track. But anyway, there you go. I didn't do um, that I know like AJ and a lot of guys do is the lot pleats um, I just thought I would try on this one just out of interest obviously it's not an overly complex panel it's fairly flat um, if I could get away without it oh please don't do that um, all I'm doing now is just making sure that this gum tape is pushed down and sealed down all the way um, Going over the corners and just double check the corners, got all of it nice and packed tight into there. Um, when we're going through, we've got one little crease, so I'll be interested to see how this little spot here goes. Um, if it becomes a problem, I'll probably just pull it up, might throw a little bit more gum tape down, see if that'll help it. But all these corners are nicely pressed in, so fingers crossed. It looks like we've got a good seal the whole way around. We haven't got any creases anywhere other than one we were just talking about. We might try and plug the vacuum pump in and pull a bit of vacuum down on it, see how we go. The um, plan is that I'll pull the vacuum down. I've got to head out to Ample today. Um, pull the vacuum down this morning. I'll come home this afternoon. And if it's still got vacuum, I'll be over the moon, and that means then that we might actually mix up some resin. Fingers crossed. I'm not going to do my normal time lapse for this, I've got a feeling it might happen pretty quickly. Um, so, what I'll do is I'll just leave you guys recording, and um, I'll probably end up pulsing the um, vacuum pump just so I can pull a bit of vacuum down and um, see how we go. So, let's... All right. As I thought, that happened fairly quickly. These little lines from watching other people's stuff, it doesn't seem to matter. Um, it's more so that we had the peel fly nice and flat and the carbon was nice and flat, so, well, again. The hard part without having the vacuum gauge is that we don't really know if we're losing the vacuum. I'm still waiting for the gauge to turn up. 
but I figure if I can pull the vacuum down to a point where it looks like it's staying. out of its groove. I'll just chuck it back in there. What I might do. Might just grab a little bit of Vaseline just to give that thread and that o-ring a bit of uh, slip, a bit less resistance. Might help it stay in that groove a little bit too. expecting to leak didn't. The part that I didn't think would leak did. That's generally how it goes. That fits better. Alright. Take two. Hopefully the pump isn't too noisy on the video. If it is, I might have to move it outside for future. Uh, turn the pump off and we'll see. Still sounds like we've got a leak. GoPro wigged out again. We did have a little leak. Um, it was actually coming from just a little um, joint where our um, gum tape was for that inlet. You just, just hear it as soon as we kind of pinch that down, it stops going. So, fingers crossed we'll leave that for tonight, see how it goes. Um, hopefully if we come back tonight and there's still vacuum down, we um, might throw some resin in. There we go. All right, back home, been like, six hours still had a wicked vacuum on that so i'm pretty confident we just had a little 
air leak just around the fitting here. So I've um, we just chucked some gum tape in there and that was what it was since this morning that um, hasn't lost any vacuum, but it's interesting. So where I did put that uh, bit of breather in there, you actually have a look at this end. This will be the end the resin flows in on, but it has actually squashed it over. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how the resin flows through it. I think it'll be all right. But we're, uh, we're back home with Jimmy's car. So we, um, obviously, it's been at Ample. Zane's done a pretty wicked job. Really nice cages, a couple of little bits and pieces to do, but kind of once seats in and we've got all the fitment in, we're ready to go. But yeah, she looks real nice. Now, next step is I've got to clean the interior up and paint it but I think we're gonna have to have a bit of a game plan for a few other things because the more we pull apart the more stuff we're finding so I think it might be new battery going in it fuel system is just clagged full so I'll see if I can see the fuel pump it wasn't running overly great when uh, when well just before we started the strip down and I don't know if you can see it, but that's the fuel pump. That is just, oh, see if you'll focus. Maybe, maybe not. It is just clagged full. So, once again, you know, it's like race cars, things sit around. It all turns uh, bigger than Ben Hammer over time. Anyway, see if we can mix up some, uh, well, yeah, drag everything out, get ready to mix up some resin. Next day, um, come out, looking good, still holding a vacuum, happy days, we actually had our vacuum gauge turn up, so I might get around to putting that in, maybe tomorrow. Um, I think this will be all right for now, considering we've tested it for a fair while. So, resin. Um, a lot of carbon, kind of the expensive part with carbon from what I've found looking into it comes from what resin you use. Um, the epoxy resin is dear as poison. It's obviously got its upsides. It's a fair bit stronger, but um, turning the guys we got it off, they've recommended uh, just a vinyl ester um, resin. So it's uh, a lot less smelly, a lot easy to use, and it's way cheaper. Um, it doesn't do quite as well UV wise. So if we are doing like down the track when I do the doors, um, that kind of stuff, we will then have to clear coat it. From what I understand that then will kind of give us normally like a two pack clear, same as what it's on a normal car, should give us very similar results to what you get from a normal car clear. So we'll just play along like at the end of the day, I think. Um, I think you're looking at nearly $50 a litre for your epoxy versus about $20 a litre um, for the vinyl ester. And this part alone, just one door card, you're talking 400 grams of, sorry, you're talking about 200 grams of carbon. Um, so about 200 grams of resin there. There's half a square metre of the breather which takes up, they say about 700 grams a square meter. So another 350 there. So probably gonna be mixing up uh, 500 grams. And I normally like to just add another 10% for a bit of a safety factor. So 550 grams. Um, and that should get us the part made. So I'll start keeping a bit of a tally on how much resin we're using and I might be able to start making my own little spreadsheet up for what we're actually using and how much. So, yeah, we'll get to mixing and um, get going from there. All right, so <clears throat> I've just got 620 grams. Um, this resin is mixed up at one and a half percent. So what I used to do when I was doing the fiberglass is I just used to have a couple of like little cheat numbers just 
stuff that we used to do a fair bit. So like for 300 grams of resin, 400, uh, sorry, four and a half grams of ME. We go and do a 620 times by 0.015, 9.3. So we'll get 9.3 grams of the MEK. So with these little bottles, this one's a bit, uh, how you going? But you squeeze it and you can actually see your resin come up. So we're gonna be coming up to about here. So the other thing is obviously it's meant to be by weight. Um, so the fact that we've got, uh, we need technically 9.3 grams worth of resin, not so much 9.3 mils. So all I'll do is I normally just tear the scales. I know that I've got about what I need ready to go, zero the scales, and then we can pour it in and make sure that we've got the right amount. All right, this is pretty much go time. Once we pour the catalyst in, at the moment everything's fine sitting as it is, it'll be no worries. Once we pour this catalyst in, that's where you start, then you're on a time frame. So they say at one and a half percent, at I think 20 degrees ambient temperature, you've got like an hour with this pot life. Um, we're a bit cooler than that. I think it's kind of 15 odd degrees in here at the moment. So if we do go to that one and a half percent, we should be pretty comfortable. Um, so yeah, I'll probably end up chucking you guys on a time lapse now because this is where it's going to get a bit tricky and a bit quicker. I probably won't have a whole lot of time. Um, just want to try and get this right first go. So stick with us. Well, let's see how this goes. So we've got a pot of resin, we've got the um, hose running into it. And we're starting the infusion. I've just marked the line to where we were, 10 past eight. The time is now, uh, 10, 12, so two minutes we've gone yay far. I, I, as far as I'm kind of, understanding it will slow down the further out you get but we should have enough pot time to be able to do it we'll see maybe one of those something new see what happens i do think that maybe the end of the resin tube uh i will have to do like what i did on the vacuum side where i'll have to have that bit of um um breather in there. I'm not sure if maybe I've got a bit too much of a resin break here and that's why it's slow or if that's just normal speed. You'll learn. You'll learn together. Fairly slow. Um, I think we're at about what, eight thirty now. So in ten minutes, we've gone from this line out to about here. One thing I did check, you might have seen it, is the resin temperature was about thirteen degrees. So all I've done is I've just um, filled a, a pot up with some hot water, um, and then put the resin in that as you can see and it's actually brought the resin temperature up to about 30 degrees i'll just keep giving it a bit of a 
a mix up um, and just keeping an eye on it, make sure it's not setting too quickly. Um, but yeah, we do seem to be having a bit of luck with that. Um, I'll do another mark, what is the time? Yeah, 8.30, we'll do another line. It's probably not necessary, but for me it just gives me an idea of if we are slowing down or if we're on top of it. And fingers crossed. We've got enough resin and we've got enough time. It's only been, yeah, it's been about 25 minutes. I think I started just after eight o'clock, so say half hour. We're not quite halfway through the part, but I do think now that we've warmed the resin up, that we are getting a bit, bit more flow to it. I'd say that just the viscosity of it was too thick um, for infusion. That's the whole thing is you need it to be fairly thin so it can run through. It's not a thick laminate. Um, it's not gonna run through overly easily. So fingers crossed. So we go. stuffed it that's what happens trying to warm that resin up i was just trying to keep it around that kind of 25 degrees and uh well yeah that didn't work so that's cured in there that's garbage it's all kind of gone jelly so we've just clamped it off there's a bit of air in here which i just have seen it's run through the part so we'll see what happens but I dare say this part's probably only going to be good for maybe just some little filler pieces now, but what can you expect? First part, probably should have been more patient. Tried just seeing how the resin went at room temperature. Oh well, these things happen. We'll move on. Well, note the self, that got spicy. It's actually, it's gotten hot. It's like 60 odd degrees. And it's actually started to melt the milk carton that it was in. I just brought it outside. I don't need that going off in the house. <laughs> Whoops. I'll just leave it do its thing next time. <laughs> oh. I'm back. Um, after this morning, I kind of went out, had some errands to do. Thought I just might leave everything alone for a bit, regroup, come back at it. So I've actually had a bit of a chat with Gavin um, and he's kind of giving me the pointer of let's maybe try and break into the bag again, run a new infusion hose and maybe have another go at a second infusion to see if we can finish this part out. Um, I'm not too fussed how this turns out. It'd be awesome if we can save it and that'll be um, the goal. And then it's at least something in the bank that we know how we could potentially save a part in future if I stuff it up again. Um, but worst case scenario, hey, we've got a reasonable section that has, at the moment, looked like it's cured off all right. So there we go. So we'll um, set up to break into the bag, have another go, see what happens. be able to save this. Um, I'm just going to measure up, mix up some resin and um, see how we go.
Got nothing really to lose at this point. We've already kind of lost the part, but we'll um, we'll see if we can resurrect it. Well, back at it. See what happens. So we've got the second infusion starting. This time, I'm not going to warm the resin. That didn't seem to work last time. Um, it's running in fairly nicely. It is a bit bridged up here, but we don't have any air leaks. So that's a win. Um, what is the time? We'll just mark it. 406, let's say 405. 405. Let's see what happens. Just keep an eye on it. I think um, what I noticed with this one when we clamped it off, it crapped a fair bit. So we'll probably might clamp it off about here. And let's um, see what happens. What's the worst that can happen? Four thirty. We have it infused all the way. It's, um, didn't head back, so we've just got a little bit. It just means we can't use that top twenty mil or fifteen mil. But that's life. It'll be interesting when um, when the other half kind of all went wrong. Um, we did get a bit of air in it and it, you can see there's air in here so i'll be interested when we pull it off because this is actually it looks very different and as you probably saw in the um time lapse i got the air out of it and i've clamped it off before any air got in there's a pocket of resin here so i'll probably just try and pull a bit of vacuum on it and see if that clears it out but it's probably a bit resin rich but it's actually not on the part so It'll be interesting to see if we can see a difference, um, whether that air actually got into the part, whether that air stays in the flow mesh or what happens. So we'll see. Probably come back tomorrow and see how it's looking. Well, how about that? We have a carbon door card. It's, um, there's no air in it anywhere. It has come out amazing. And especially considering I wasn't too sure how we were gonna go after the bit of air that came into it and the first bit of resin going off and all that. It does have a bit of silvering to it, you could probably say, but I think with um, with a bit of clear coat, it'll come off all right. So I may even just go out and go get a just a rattle can clear 
I've used those before from your Auto Pros or they seem to work pretty well for what they are. I may even have one actually. But rains are coming. I might um, be parking up this so I can get Jimmy's car in out the weather. Don't want that cage getting wet and rusty. So I think that'll probably be all for this week. Uh, next week, probably be a bit back on Jimmy's. Um, I think we'll be prepping the roll cage for paint. Uh, possibly starting to look at some of the wiring. Jimmy was up today, probably just saw he helped me peel this off and he's pretty stoked, so that's cool. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot happening on my car, but you'll have to come back next week and see. Anyway, have a good weekend. We'll uh, see you all in a fortnight. Cheers.